it is just about 10 o'clock. Um, did anyone else catch the song that I was playing? It was called Safe and, Safe and Sound um, <laughs> by Capital Cities. And the reason I set it up that way is because we're going to talk about being safe. Um, it's the end of September, which was Realtor Safety Month. And uh, we have John Stark jo joining us. He is an agent uh, from the West Town office in West Des Moines. He is also uh, an instructor. He has a teaching background. He's he's fabulous. And he has a little bit of history that he will share with us about what kind of makes him qualified to talk about some of the things he's going to talk about today. But tell me this, um, everyone, do you guys have a safety plan? Is it something that you've thought about um, in your business. And if, if you're an employee and not an agent, um, you guys can take these things to heart too, because it's not just about being realtor safety. It's just about being aware, right, John? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You, you need to be aware and, um, heightened awareness will just make you, uh, be able to point out any risks that are so that you can make the right decision. So John, I'll let you take it away from here. All right. Thanks. Good morning. Good afternoon. Whatever you're watching in record land in cyberspace, uh, welcome to our DP family members. Uh, as, as Sarah said, my name is John Stark. I'll give you an email address right now. So if you have questions later that pop up, please feel free to reach out. It's john.stark at cbdsm.com. Um, today is, like she said, wrapping up Realtor Safety Month. And we got a very simple process that I want you to pay attention to. And administratively, let me let me tell you that I'm watching a clock so I give time for questions and I'm watching a script so I say the right things and don't drop uh, naughty words. Um, the simple process for your safety, just think sad. You wanna be situationally aware. You want to avoid situations that can hurt you. And if you have to, we wanna talk a little bit about defending yourself. But being having the first two spidey senses going are gonna keep you at that safe level. The other thing I want you to know is that this stuff is my opinion. I'll explain where I came up with these opinions of mine and these tools and things. They're in no way representative of a company policy. Uh, Mid-America in our policy manual in which all of us have signed off that we've read and none of us have, but that all of us have signed off that we've read does have some stuff on safety. And it's really, I repeat it here, it's good to take a look at. Uh, DP folks uh, do the same, but at the end of the day, remember that you're responsible for your safety. No one else is, it's all up to you. Sarah, if questions come up during the chat, just interrupt and ask, cause I can't, I'm not gonna be able to see the chat, but excuse me. And Good news, bad news. The good news is there's no PowerPoint slides. The bad news is there's no PowerPoint slides, which means it's me. Um, this whole presentation can be argued, argued with, yeah, but. Yeah, but. We've got mutual friends on Facebook. Yeah, but. He looked nice on LinkedIn. Yeah, but. My, we have, uh, my, my friends know him. Um, yeah, but. He came clear on forewarn. I don't care. We could yeah, but this to death and every situation is different and unique. So take, keep, keep this all with that in mind that it may not apply to the next phone call you get, but it might apply to the next 10 or 11th phone call that you get. Um, but overall, with situational awareness, I want you to think about your spidey senses. I want you to think about that gut feeling and while you're doing that, I'll tell you that on Wednesday, I was driving home from the Iowa Association of Realtors Convention, and there was a car in me that was filled with what I will nicely call chuckleheads, and I just felt funky about them. I, I really did. And I was like, nope, not going to be anywhere near them. And I backed off probably eight car lengths. And before you knew it, bam, they hit somebody, T-boned them in an intersection. I thought that was my spidey sense. And that's what will help you guys throughout your safety Uh no, uh, you know, kind of your safety thing. It's kind of like breathing. Eventually it just comes to you. And that's what I want to help you get to. So why me? Well, a million years ago, I earned my way through college by being a police officer in what then was a small Iowa suburb 
and is now one of the largest cities in Iowa. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had nothing to do with that. Then I spent 21 years in the Air Force, and this is where Safety Sense was really formulated into my being, where I was in the intelligence services and worked in counterintelligence and counter-narcotics uh, and then counterterrorism as well. And there I worked as what's called a singleton by myself, almost always in a hostile area and really almost always by myself. And you just kind of develop that spidey sense. You heard last week from Jen Stanbro about Ashley Oakland's murder. Um, that really got me. I knew Ashley as well. Of course, many people did. She's a, she a really social person. What I didn't like was the lack of response from the major brokerages in town. They're like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. We should uh, not hold open houses for a couple of weeks. Or uh, let's put cameras in an open house. I got mad enough that I went to the police department myself and met up with a couple of officers and we developed a realtor safety program that the three of us did and gave away for two-ish, two three-ish years, and then it just kind of trickled off into nothing. So um, here is the crucial point for a policy. Now, remember, we're in situational awareness now. We're going to get into it with this. Whatever safety policy you develop, my safety policy is mine. I may do things and say things that you wouldn't dream of doing or saying, and that's okay but only you can be responsible for your safety. But remember, policy, you're an independent contractor, you own your own business, you set your own policies. You set your own dress code, you set how you're gonna take a sick day. Let's talk about setting a safety policy, which usually begins on that first phone call in, sign call, floor call, or maybe it happens at the open house, excuse me. This session and safety in general is not dealing with my brother-in-law's coworker. It's not dealing with my referral from a past client. Generally speaking, we hang around with people like ourselves. And so if my client's a good guy, the people he refers will likely also be a good guy. Um, but what I want you to, to start doing, there's a great term. I would like you to start being pro, pro, professionally assertive or aggressive. And what's that mean? We have to ask awkward questions in real estate. They're not bad questions. They're not personal questions because we really don't know these people. I'm going to use the example of a phone call, a floor call that says, hey, I saw your listing and, or I saw a listing that your company has and I'd like to see it. What's your name? Now, floor call, they may not have their phone number. Sign call, you might have it right there on your cell phone. Great. You've got their name and your phone number. Where are you currently living? What interests you in this house? Now, you guys are probably going, John, this is basic sales stuff, right? It's also basic safety stuff because you're plumbing what caused them to call you. Is it because it's vacant? Is it because it's secluded? Is it because you're uh, uh, an attractive target online? And attractive can mean anything from a short guy to a glamorous woman. Doesn't matter. But what got them to call you and ask to see that home. After you get this information, I don't know if our DP friends have forewarn, but you want to forewarn them. You want to Google them. You want to LinkedIn them. You want to, in Iowa, you can even go to the Iowa courts online. If a guy's got a recent charge for assault, as just happened in my office last week, when someone said, I don't like the feel of this guy. And I got out my forewarn app and found out that two weeks ago he'd been charged with, with domestic assault. Then we went on Iowa Courts Online and found out that this is a regular thing. And I said, you need to cancel the appointment. No need to meet with this character. But what, what if they say no to any of that? My policy, terminate the call. These aren't terrible questions you're asking. If you say, what's your name? Where do you live? Why do you want to see the house? Have you been pre-approved? But if they won't answer those questions, they're out. But let's say they do answer those questions and they want to meet you at the house. I want them to come into the office. If they won't do that, I'll take, meet them at Starbucks. John, I'd love to do that, but you know what? I can't meet a half an hour before we see the house at two o'clock because I'm at work. Great, I'll meet you at work. We just need 10 minutes to get acquainted. 
No, you know what? I work on a factory and I can't have you out on the factory floor. Excellent. There's a Starbucks right by the house. Well, you know what? I don't like coffee. You know, I'm kind of concerned as to why you won't meet with me before we see the house. It's for both of our safety that I'm concerned that we meet in advance. What do you think? If they still do, my policy is cut them off. We're done. Your safety is paramount. Your seller's safety is also paramount. I should point out, this is a two-hour CE class in Iowa. You're getting it in 20 minutes, so I'm going to have to boogie here because I looked at my timer and went, uh-oh. All right. <laughs> um, criminals are opportunists. They are there for the profit motive, and they are a risk-reward balance. If a criminal sees a female agent in high heels driving a Lexus RX350 going to a vacant house, that's a target because they can get away with it. If a criminal sees a female in high heels and a Lexus RX350 and someone else gets out of the car with her, she is no longer a target because now that criminal has two people to deal with. A predator, on the other hand, is almost exclusively male. I mean, in the high 90%. So we're going to say he. A predator is angry at women and is looking to violently assault them or sexually assault them in order to right some perceived wrong. They are very much mentally ill, and they are also extremely dangerous. So if you're showing a house or doing an open house and you are not comfortable, I want you to get a buddy and show or open with that buddy. Office mates, family members, even a neighbor. I'm not very tall, but I've got a six foot five uh, former, ar former army officer who would love nothing better than to be your buddy and go to an open house and protect you. He would feel really good about that. But guess where the other level of protection comes in? It comes in in your local police department. Every cop on in, in the world has got something on their bumper that says protect and serve, service with excellence, protection, what, whatever. It's their job to protect you. Dispatch says, where's your emergency? You say, I don't have one, but I'm going to be at 8761 Dakota Drive at one o'clock showing a house. The guy gives me a little bit of a spidey sense. I'd love it if an officer could come by and check in on me. It's their job. They will do it happily. If you're doing an open house and you just want a patrol, they'll do that as well. If you're serving cookies and coffee, they will stop in for a cup of coffee and cookies just to do their job. Now, here are some more. Now we're kind of in, in the avoidance. If you didn't catch that already, I should have said that. Um, at your showings or your open house, I want you to be at least 15 minutes early. And here is why. You're going to pull up, not park in the driveway where you can be blocked in, but rather you're going to pull up into the, well, just in front of the house for all I care, but not in the drive. And as you do, stay in your car and scan the house. Look at the shrubbery and the landscaping around the house and make certain that there is nowhere that someone could hide. Now, what if your guest has arrived early with you at 15 minutes? Guys, this is a yellow flag to me, and I want to know right away, are they just that anxious to see the house? Or did they want to make certain you were alone and prepare to, as we say in the military, kill you or steal all your shit? So make that determination, but then do this. And this is a sneaky little tip for you. Turn around and say, hey, stay in your car. I want to make sure the house is safe for you, not for you, the realtor, for your guest. Makes them feel better. But you know what? If it's a criminal, they'll either continue walking up to meet you, or they'll ignore you, or they'll drive away. When you get to the lockbox, don't bend over and open up the lockbox. If you can, turn around and face the street, paying attention to what's going on around you. When you open the door, do you jump right in? No. When you open the door, what I'd like you to do would be do the smell test. We actually use this in military operations where one guy would stick his head just barely in and smell. Is there cigarette smoke, body odor, cooking odors? Maybe it's the neighbor or maybe it's the, the homeowner. They just left cooking curry. Big deal. But what if it's a vacant house and you smell body odor or cigarette smoke? Somebody might be in that house. So pay attention to that. Walk in the home, close the door, lock the door. But wait, John, I'm going to show the damn house. Not yet, you're not. You're going to find your escape route. You're going to go to the slider or that back door and unlock it and open it and make sure there's no obstructions. You're going to go to the garage fire door and unlock it. I don't want you to open the garage door yet, but I do want you to open the garage door soon. 
planning your escape route. Now you can let them in. And some of the other little tips and techniques, walk in, be Iowa or Idaho nice and say, come on in after you, please. Don't ever walk in front of your guest. You don't know what they're going to do. Grab you by the back of the neck and they own your ass. All right. You're going to stand seven to 10 feet away from them. Because if you are within arm's length of them, there's my arm. You have lost the game. If they can grab you, you have already lost before the game even started. Beautiful thing about COVID. Beautiful thing about the season change coming up here. I might have a little bit of a cold, Mr. Guest. I'm sorry, I can't come a little closer. Or I just got over COVID. I don't want to get you sick. But stay away from these folks. Again, until they prove themselves that they are nice people, if they hand you a pre-approval letter and all that. Now, last thing, sign-in sheets at open houses. I've heard some open house training on Focus Fridays before that talks about the sign-in sheet. I understand why it can be exciting for people to get names and addresses, and that's fine if you use them. But here's an interesting trick. You all have a cell phone. It has a camera. Take a photograph. Yeah, a photograph of their driver's license. Remember how you set your own policies for your own safety? And you've now decided on September 29th that your current policy, your new policy, is to take a photograph of every stranger's driver's license that you ever meet. The key word there is every. You do run the risk of a HUD violation if you take photographs of everybody except John. And then the O'Shaughnessy family says, hey, I don't think he likes me because I'm Irish. He took my picture, but he didn't take John's. So be just cautious of that and be consistent. I sit on hearing panels and real estate commission boards for uh, discipline. And I will tell you the inconsistency is what gets a realtor almost every time. So be consistent on taking their driver's license photograph. If they won't give it to you, if they won't leave the house, if you're not comfortable and you ask them or tell them, don't ask, tell them to leave the house. I want to remind you of something. In the Constitution, there has been no enshrinement of the right to look at a vacant home or to be in your open house. If you are not comfortable, they need to leave. If they don't leave, here's a crazy thing. This starts the D for defensive. Get the hell out of there. If you're not comfortable, leave the house. What about my seller's things? What about your life? What about my seller's things? What about you getting the hell beat out of you? Get out of the house if they're making you nervous. They'll follow, run to your car. Running is not cowardice, by the way. Running is courageous. But run to your car, lock the door, dial 911. And according to, I've got two police chiefs in my rotary group, and they both vetted this program. They both love it. But the both police chiefs said, here's the phrase to use. I'm at 8761 Dakota Drive in West Des Moines, Iowa, and I have got an unwanted guest at my open house. Suddenly, their four to six minute response will turn into two or three minutes. They will be there in a really big hurry for an unwanted guest. Now, I have to go to the ele elephant in the room because I'm looking at my time and I'm thinking I'm hitting 20 minutes. Is that about right, Sarah? Okay, one more drink of water. Defensive weapons. This is gonna be a lightning round on the assumption that somebody will have questions about them. And I'm going to give them a movie rating, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. Pepper spray. I give it mostly a thumbs in the middle. It's a, it's a proximity weapon. You do have to be very close to use pepper spray. It's also a very effective weapon to incapacitate an attacker. Um, the problem I really have with pepper spray more than anything else isn't even the proximity. It's the, where is it on you? Police officers carry it on their belt so they can reach up and, there's my God, I never have gotten that right. Then and, and squeeze the button. Ladies, carry it on your purse, you carry it on a keychain, it, it will never be close enough for you. Men, if you carry it, it'll probably be in your pocket. If you're wearing a suit coat, it might be in your blazer pocket. They do make belt holsters for these things for civilians. If you're going to carry pepper spray, get that. And you might be able to take it from a thumbs in the middle to thumbs up. A knife. Uh, believe it or not, the NAR did a survey and showed that 22% of men, realtors, carry knives. <clears throat> Big thumbs down. There's some other hand. Big thumbs down. These are so close in proximity and so hard to use 
First off, you're probably going to try and stab and I want you to jab. That's the first thing. Secondly, you're within arm's length. So guess what? They already own you because they're just going to take your wrist and break it. Thirdly, I just don't think that it's going to be uh, effective enough with a three or four inch blade. Now, it could be that out in Montana, you're carrying uh, skinning knives and things like that, and big, ginormous blades, maybe. But I still give them kind of a thumbs down for the idea that you've got to be pretty darn close to your attacker to use it. Now, next is the noisemaker alarm. And I had no idea these things existed. One of our longtime agents here in Iowa has one, and I asked her to demonstrate it. And she goes, oh, not in here. What it is, is it connects to your keychain, and it breaks, just pulls apart like so. We went outside, and guys, it is like standing next to a police siren. It is so loud. Now, what do loud noises do? They attract crowds. Anytime you hear a loud noise, the first thing you do, wherever you may be, is look up. I always go back to when I was in a very bad car accident once and it was a very loud noise. It ironically happened directly below my wife's office downtown Des Moines. And everybody on that floor got up and went to the windows because they heard the loud noise. So a loud siren is going to make not only your attacker freak out and leave, it's also going to make your neighbors come by and see what's going on. So I give the loud noisemakers a thumbs up. Um, a baton. There's something called an ASP tactical baton where you flick it out and it goes to that big. Great, except number one, again, it's a close proximity weapon. Number two, it does require practice. And number three, not many of us know how to fight or what it's going to feel like when we take something and swing it and hit somebody on the side of the head, which you're not supposed to do, by the way, with those things. But you hit somebody in their chest and it hurts your wrist. I just don't really give them much other than a thumbs down. A taser. The police carry tasers. What do you guys think? Do I love a taser or do I not like a taser? Love them. Oh, I got a thumbs in the middle. I love tasers and here's why. First thing, you can be as much as 20 or 25 feet away from your assailant. Wow, that's a, that's a mile. That's a great place to be. Number two, it's an instant inca incapacitating weapon. They get hit with those barbs and they go straight down. Now, remember, I don't have one here. But you know those stun guns that look like your phone? Bad. Those are the ones you have to come up here. I don't want you to have that. This is a real life taser that looks like what the cops carry because Taser America sells them to civilians. They run $3.99. You should get some training on them. But once you, uh, once you have it, in Iowa, no restrictions on carrying that bad boy. And it can be carried on your belt. Pull that thing out. Nobody wants to be tased. I've been tased. It is absolutely no fun, even in a controlled environment. But a taser, I really do like that weapon because you will not be judged in a court of law for killing a guy, which brings us to the big dog. Thankfully, always near the end of my 20 minutes. Ooh, I'm over 20. The big dog is a firearm. Man, oh man, controversial as hell. I'm not going to tell you anything other than I give it a reluctant thumbs up, but that's because I'm used to carrying a firearm. Um, firearms have one purpose. A handgun has one purpose, and it is not defense. It is not to protect you. It is not to show somebody to scare them away. It is to take a human being's life. You have to be comfortable with that because every safety training program in America will tell you, when the gun clears the holster, your finger should be working its way into the trigger guard. You should be looking behind your target to make certain you don't hit something that's not intended. And then you should shoot at your target in center mass with the goal of taking their life. There is no such thing as shoot to wound. There is, believe it or not, no such thing as accuracy. Um, both of my police chief friends in Rotary told me they both attended the NA, uh, FBI National Academy. And Chad said, John, 15% of police shootings are accurate. I said, what does that mean? He said, it means they hit who they were shooting at. And Pete, the other chief said, oh yeah, I'm surprised it's that high. These guys are the trained guys. So my concern about the firearm is you need the training. It needs to be safe. You need to follow the laws. And then you need the moral compass that says, if I use this, heaven forbid, but if I use this, I'm going to use it for its purpose. So Guys, that was a blast of two hours in Iowa. I would have given you two hours credit, but I can't do it for the other guys. What uh, what do we have on um, the chat? Uh, 
Sarah, anything I need to be concerned with? Or No, everybody's pretty quiet today. Excellent. I'm, I'm that good. Um, it is. And I think it's really good <laughs> information. Oh, hang on. We just, oh, excellent information. Thank you. Thank you. It really was, John. I think you've heightened everybody's awareness. You've talked about everything. If we had more time, I'm sure you could fill it. And I've taken your two hour class. It's really good stuff. I think that we need to make sure that we address this more than once a year. It probably needs to be talked about once a month or just a little reminder in our office meeting. So I encourage you guys to talk. If you see something, say something. But before I wrap this up, everyone, um, I want to tell you about next week and what we're going to do for Focus Friday. So next Friday, Next Friday, which is October, um, we're going to be announcing a contest to help you guys, the agents, end your year with more money, more sales, more listings. Um, and then we're also going to go through the lineup of educational events, which includes our 2024 business planning workshop, which is going to start at the end of October and go for four weeks. Um, it's going to be awesome. So tune in so that you can learn about, um, well, I know you guys are all competitive because we're all in sales. So mm -hmm. show up so we can tell you how you can win some good stuff. John, thank you so much. Everyone Thanks, else. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. 